splitting edema rails, pleural effusions on physical exam, poor appetite, and some residual urinary volume. She, uh, uh, potassium was slightly elevated. Uh, she was on furosemide and antihypertensive medication. And the fact was complicated that this woman uh, ran out of money to pay for her dialysis. So my question then was, of course, uh, what would you do in such a situation? And, um, and there are some possibilities. Well, in case there is therapy, raise funds to pay for some form of pain. Two million people may have died prematurely because they did not have access to, uh, to mineral replacement therapy. This was in 2015. Now, in this year, in April, uh, the, kidney, uh, the Global Kidney Health Atlas uh, was published and it says that it's projected that in 2013, 30, 10 years from now, 14.5 million people will have end-stage kidney disease and need treatment that only 4.5 million will actually receive it due to economic, social, and political factors. Meaning, in other words, that 9 million will not, and they will, of course, pass away. And when you look at, uh, at one of those uh, graphs in this global kidney health effort, you see in 2010, in blue, there are the number of patients that will that in, uh, receive dialysis, and in yellow are those patients that do not receive it. And you see that the shortfall increases actually from 7.1 million in 2010 to 9.1 million in 2030. So while the number of dialysis patients is increasing, the number of those patients who would actually need it is increasing even more. And uh, and so this, uh, just to make it very clear, uh, it shows that uh, in 2010, it's about 3 million who would need it, and 7 million don't receive it in 2013, the situation is very different. Now, when you compare it to other numbers, uh, it's just stunning. For example, uh, from HIV AIDS, 940,000 people died in 2017. All wars and genocides combined between 2010 and 2016 were around 600,000 deaths. Malaria, breast cancer, lung cancer, maybe all these numbers are smaller, are smaller than the number of patients who die or will die from kidney disease. But when have you read the last time in a journal, uh, in a general journal on TV, seen anything about kidney disease? It's just not in the mind of people that this is a real health, public health uh, issue and a public health uh, disaster. Now, uh, most of those people who uh, with end-stage kidney disease live in low, low middle income countries. And you see that on the top left circle, you see that um, only 4% of those who would need kidney replacement therapy in low, mid low income countries actually receive it, as opposed to something like 60% in high income countries. Now, uh, what this Lancet article stated, there is a pressing need to look for other alternatives, for low-cost renal replacement therapy alternatives. And uh, in, uh, by the end of 2017, we started to mentally, in a thought experiment, totally deconstruct hemodialysis and ask ourselves, what is really necessary for hemodialysis? Well, it's vascular access, dialyzer, blood lines, dialysis, pump or pumps, energy, priming and rinsing to it. So this was something like, like this deconstruction. And then, uh, so when you, when you think about it, this is now how com conventional in-center hemodialysis works. You have the patient, the dialyzer, which is hooked up to the machine, and you have, in most cases, in many cases, a complex, uh, a complex water system that, uh, that creates clean water to be later converted into dialysis. So it's a huge logistic machinery that's attached to it. It's, um, it's, it's quite some effort. And so I went, when I was traveling in, in Ghana, in East Africa, actually, in 2017, I was visiting my daughter who was working in a hospital there. Uh, I, I, it really thought to me, what if we do the following? We have here this complex system to create dialysis. What if we replace this by a healthy human being? By someone we call body? just for lack of a better term. And then uh, this, uh, so the, the body's blood would flow counter current on the other side of the dialysis. We usually dialysate this, and uh, toxins and fluid will move over to the healthy person. 
and this uh, healthy person would excrete those substances with his or her healthy kidneys. It's a totally crazy idea, right? Uh, uh, you all would agree, and, and so, so, so that, that's what I also thought. And, um, but that's, uh, that's the concept here. So you have a patient on one side of the, whose blood flows on one side of the membrane, uh, and you have the body whose blood flows counter current on the other side of the membrane. And of course, so, uh, solutes, toxins, potassium, etc., would diffuse into the into the healthy patient. And substances like following the concentration rate, and the substances like bicarb, vitamins, amino acids, maybe even EPO, would diffuse into the other direction, following the concentration rate. Now, uh, at RI, we are we are very good at mathematical modeling. And so it was, of course, the first thing that I would ask one of our, my colleagues, I'll show the data later, just to, to even to think about this mathematically. Does this even make sense? You know? It's such, such an outlandish idea. And it was very clear that there are so many questions that need to be addressed, medical questions, for example. Just a, a short list. Is it adequate? What about vascular access? What about blood flows? What happens to blood leaks, infection? What's the, uh, what's the effect on the body? Anticoagulation, membrane type, dialyzer. What kind of dialyzer? What's the psychological dynamic of this patient body there? And in many, many, many questions, of course, come up. Uh, now, uh, by Hartman Ashbury, um, a chemical engineer who I work very closely with in New York, developed a mathematical model just as a first kind of test, does this even work, right? And without going into the details, uh, he modeled, for example, a, um, a, a situation where um, where a child, see a child with uh, 15 kilogram or 20 kilogram has acute kidney injury, and, uh, and he, the child's mom or dad or uncle, whatever, uh, serves as a body. Does this even work, and how many treatments would be necessary? And guess what? His analysis showed, yes, it would work. Three sessions a, a, a week are sufficient to treat this child. Then, uh, I'll skip over this. Uh, then I did the same analysis for an adult. What if an adult person has this, has kidney failure? Uh, how many treatments would there be necessary? It turned out, well, maybe it's four or five treatments, depending very much on the size, the relative size of the patient and the body. So it's, um, it's something that, that actually is doable. Now what is the next, uh, once we did this, and once we had this sort of proof of concept, by pure mathematics, we, I, I, this was, I think, in December 2017. In January 2017, I, I asked for a technical consultation. And we have a very, very close relationship with uh, <coughs> Professor Nick Stenek, who is our man to go whenever we have ethical medical questions. And, uh, and the first question he, uh, he addressed was, are there compelling ethical reasons against further research? You know, there, there are, there are some, some concepts where even research may not be ethical. And, uh, and so that's what he analyzed. And he, in his opinion, no, that, that there is no, in his view, no ethical reason that suggests that no further research should be undertaken. Okay. Then he said there is even an ethical mandate, even though huge loss of lives we experience every day. There is even an ethical mandate to explore treatment options. And, um, and it says also it's to explore options that will serve in particular developing countries. Now, the second question he addressed was, if ROHD offers an e effective option of renal replacement therapy, can it be used ethically? And he said, well, the final judgment will depend on the outcome of research findings. Uh, and, but then he brought something very interesting up. He said, you know what? In our societies, people are actually paid to accept risk. And he said, from his perspective, even bodies would be paid for, for, for